All right, everyone grab their coffee, grab their snacks. It's been a day, but we're gonna learn some stuff today. Welcome to class, everyone. It is me, once again, in front of you, about to yell for a whole hour to an hour and a half. So get ready. Sorry, I'm mentally preparing myself. We got this, we got this, we got this right. Yeah, we do, I see the thumbs yeah. up there. Yeah, absolutely, heck yeah. Let's get at it. I don't know why you're here exactly. It's for yourself, for your future, for your family, whatever it is, let's hop on that bike and let's do this thing. Today is TypeScript and we're gonna be hopping into it. Are we idiot sandwiches? We sure aren't, but gosh, this little gif is absolutely hilarious, that poor woman. All right, let's hop into announcements as always. First things first, as you already know, assignment number five, Five is due on March 21st. Make sure you have at least very much looked at it. This is not like an assignment four. It is not too much like an assignment three, but it is close. It is gonna take a little bit of critical thinking. And also after last lecture, you have all the necessary tools to defeat this monster and get onto assignment number six and then cross that finish line. Oh, and then I'm gonna time out here too. Bring it on back and do what I promised. Clark, take it away. I was going to say the same thing. Assignment five, due March 21st. Next class um, is a catch-up day. So next class, don't come to lecture, go to small groups. You know the drill by now. Um, catch-up day, next class, assignment five, due March 21st. Um, big thing, everything, everything, all six graded assignments are due by the 31st. Um, if you think you need an extension, I don't get a lot of grace for this. I don't get to give nearly as many extensions as I would like because y'all are moving into unit two. So um, if you think you're gonna need a day or two on either side, please let me know now. I can give a few days after the 31st, but not by much. Um, because we move into unit two beginning on uh, April 11th, so. What it looks like is a lot of you may have assignments that are sitting out there at 0.5 or 0.9 or 0.75. That means your TAs looked at it, they inputted a grade, so I didn't yell at them, and they know that there's some corrections you still need. You need to circle back around and make those, connect, those corrections. Everything must be a passing score, and a passing score is a one. So if you have an assignment that's sitting out there, you know, your TA says you need to fix X, Y, and Z, or you don't know what you need to fix, but you know that you're sitting out there with a 0.5 on, on assignment three or a 0.75 on assignment four. Circle back with your TA, find out exactly what you need to fix. Most of the time, in my experiences, those fixes are little, they're fast, they are some minor correction that you need to make. Um, so talk to your TAs. So the important dates are assignment five, not a draft deadline, but get it in by the 21st because assignment six is rapidly. Kyle, you muted me. Extremely weird. Now you're muted. I muted myself. I'm so sorry. I was hearing a little bit of feedback and we were going in and out. So I just want to make sure that we were on me. I apologize, Clark. I forgot I was going to mute you. I'm just being <laughs> that kind of guy today. I'm sorry. Extremely weird of you. <laughs> I can't even. Um, so just remember, you do not have a, the turnaround between assignments five and assignment six real fast. It's going to be rough, but assignment six, most people say is about the easiest assignment. In my experience, it is more of a walkthrough than an assignment. It's not to say you will not need critical thinking skills because you will, but it is a lot of just following instructions. So don't be too scared of it. Don't be too scared of that quick turnaround time. Um, basically, everything needs to be, my, your takeaway from me, everything needs to be at a one by 331. If you think you need an extension, reach out to me ASAP. I'll probably take a look at where your assignments are. I, don't, I can't promise extensions. If I see that you've been turning most things in on time and you tell me you have a plan to get everything in, I'm more likely to grant an extension. So when you come to me asking for an extension, think about what's realistic, okay? That's the main thing. I want you all to succeed. I think you all can succeed. Remember to take advantage of 
our catch-up day on Thursday. We will have a catch-up day on the 31st. So you have two more, you have three more lectures, four more, three more, four more lectures. I had to think about that. That was embarrassing, um, including tonight. Um, Kyle, you're making a face. Is that at me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with you. I got to double check. I have enough slides for four more lectures. <laughs> we're all we're all having a Monday here. Um, but please, the best thing you can do with me at this point is just be communicative to me, because that's I won't grant an extension if I don't know you need it. Um, and I have a couple days grace after the 31st. But if you come to me on the 31st and ask for an extension, I'm probably not going to grant it. If you come to me this week and say, hey, this is my plan to finish everything up, I'm a lot more likely to be to give you that grace that I want to give you. So um, I will pass it back to Kyle now. If you have any questions about that, about those dates, um, please let me know. Awesome, thank you, Clark. All right, anything else to share my screen again? All right, let's hop back over here and rearrange some stuff. There we go, all righty. Cool. Thank you very much, Clark. Yeah, like you said, assignment number six, don't be too scared about it. It is following more directions, understanding the next technology that we're going to be learning about. Some number five, focus on it. So awesome, awesome. Yep, number seven, number five, due March 21st. Let's go ahead and keep going. Like you already said, Clark got all these for me, so he's doing my job. Thank you very much. No lecture on Monday. It's a catch-up day. Oh, sorry. He did my job even better. No, cla or no lecture on Thursday. It's a catch-up day. So no lecture on Thursday. I apologize for that one. Um, happy St. Patrick's Day on that one as well. I will be defending my property against all of the people in Dogtown. So yes, Thursday and then moving on. Um, I'm going to bring back my screen so I actually know what I'm going to be saying here. Perfect. Get all my stuff back. Oh, where'd you go? Like that. So cool, cool, cool. All right. So we review tonight at 8 p.m. as always. So feel free to come back. It is absolutely optional. It will be recorded. But I always like to have some friends chit-chatting with me. We have great times all the time. All right, and then finally, uh, as a courtesy to all of you all on, um, oh, let me make sure that's not going to be code, code conflict there. Just uh, one second, I need to make sure that I'm not being dumb here. I would never be dumb, right? Uh, wrong one, I need a month. Perfect, 21st. All right, never mind. I'm going to go ahead and shrink that. Um, I was going to help uh, have a uh, assignment number five Q&A. It is not going to be on Monday I because I'm off by one lecture there. Um, I will go ahead and get you guys a new time. But I'll just have a quick little like one hour session. Feel free to come in with any questions and answers about number five. Um, and I'm happy to help answer. I have a few students that's already reached out, scheduled time with me. You are also all invited to do so on Calendarly. We'll go through that assignment, whatever questions you might have. Again, I'll follow up with that Q&A little session that we'll have sometime, hopefully in the earlier evening, so more people can be able to join. All right, everyone, that is it. Oh, last bit of stuff uh, for tonight. We will be getting in TypeScript. There's nothing that you need to use on GitHub. However, do make sure that TypeScript is on your machines, because we'll be going through examples with that. Hence the title of this lecture, TypeScript. All right, I'm going to pause here. Any questions whatsoever before we go ahead and get on going? I see silence and I see in the faces like, get to it. So we'll get to it. All right, let's go ahead and get warmed up. First things first, I have this beautiful looking button here. I also have a mouse. It goes up and it clicks it. What exactly happens? What is this called? Talk to me here. Event. 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 An event, absolutely. And when an event occurs, what do we need to have in order to be able to do something about it? Event listener. An event listener. Very good. If a tree falls in the forest, does anyone hear it? Not if there's not an event listener around. So we need to go ahead and add that event listener. 
how, if I go ahead and get this element called my form, do I add an event listener to it using this code right here? Someone give me that code. Window.addEventListener. Window.addEventListener will only add an event listener to the window. We're looking to add an event listener to this element right here, the one that's in the const, const my form L. How would I add an event listener to this? My form, my form L, L, L dot add event listener. Very good. Now, this is the one thing I really want to talk about here is that, okay, we have an event listener on this submit button. What event are we going to be listening for? Click. Click. Now, typically with a button, we would be doing click, but for submit buttons, we actually do a different event to listen for this one. Submit. Oh, we actually listen for very good, specifically submit. Now, this is one big thing. Remember, if we're looking for a submit button, submit buttons are a little bit more powerful than normal buttons. They send those posts information. They also have their own event type, which is called submit. This is a little rare, but it is something we need to be wary of when we're talking about submit buttons and their events and event listeners. Awesome. After that, we add an anonymous function. You already know that. And inside of there, we actually do something when the button's actually clicked. So awesome. Now remember, this submit button sends a post. When we send a post, where are we sending that post to? What is that other side called? Server. The action yeah. attribute. It's a server. server, not an action attribute. It's a server. It also starts with an A. What is that specific server called when we send a API. post to somewhere? An API. Very good. An API. That's where all of our information out there in the world is stored for us to use. The, so the action get... element determines the destination of the submission. Correct. To the API. So when we send a post, we are sending a post to an API. The action itself is the location in which it ends up at. So the action attribute there is telling it which API to go to. But in the end, we still end up at the API. So very good. All those parts are playing a role with each other. So if we wanted to get data from an API, what would we use? We want to get information back from an API now. What beautiful, powerful tool that we learn about that we'd use for this? Fetch. Very good. Fetch. Fetch, absolutely. And so the first parameter of fetch is the? URL. The URL, I'm gonna provide that for us so you don't have to say this long line of text here. So yeah, absolutely. That URL, that endpoint that we wanna talk on the API to get information. Very good. So when we do that, we're calling to that, uh, we're calling to that endpoint in this code, what's the next thing we need to include? We have the fetch. Dot then. I think I heard it, yeah, very good, a dot then, absolutely. We have a dot then. And then anybody else remember the rest of the code here? You guys are doing awesome. Function of response. Very good. Yes, function response. Function we need to get back function. what that API sent back to us in the form of a response. Now, when we go ahead and console log this, we're not going to get necessarily anything we want to work with, but what do we exactly get back to us? What does fetch create? Because it's hint, hint, asynchronous. Yes. A JSON. Oh, promise. Very good, response. I heard it. Because it's asynchronous, what's returned back from the fetch immediately is called the promise. It's pinky promising that it's going to give us back data eventually. Remember, those asynchronous tasks really do separate themselves in two separate tasks. And that task could take whenever, however long it takes to go talk to that endpoint, wherever it is in the world, get back to it. So to say it promises to come back leaves us a promise. So. The next thing is, is that, okay, it goes out into the world and it comes back. That's called an ideal case. Everything went honky dory. But what happens if we go out and it doesn't come back? That is something that we really didn't talk about. And I got a question last cohort about it. So real quick, what I'm going to show is actually, and then I can actually get to a Visual Studio Code here. Oh, I actually know that. I'm gonna go and show you all. I'll open recent. There we go. That one. We're going to go ahead and see exactly, just very briefly, what we would do if the unideal case, an issue, actually occurred during that fetch. So if you remember this, we were doing our pet store last time. Nothing here has changed too much. We were getting our cat facts back. Real quick, if something bad happens, aka you get a bad response back. By the way, bad responses could be the numbers of 400, 
404, 401, 500, 502, things like that. 400s or 500s, that's typically a bad day. 200s is what you're looking for. If we get back any of those bad codes or those bad responses, what we want to do is do how we always do with our errors. What do we use to address our errors? Anybody remember? What do we use to address errors in JavaScript? Handler. Um, throw. Uh, handler might be a little except, general except, for that. Catch, exceptions. Try catch exception. exception. Very good. Absolutely. I heard them all. A try catch exception. In this case, think of the top here as the try. But if something happens, we need to catch that error. So what we would do is extend a catch onto here. And then in here, we could console log the error. So this is a way to protect against any bad returns from your API, because they do happen. Other computers go down in the world. There's a power outage where your API is. Maybe the cat fact factory is down. You're going to get back a bad response, and you're going to need to address that as the developer. And this is how we get back that error, that dot catch. So real quick, any questions about this? I'm not going to go too much in depth, but I did want to just introduce you all to the catch here before we move on do you use the you you're doing the catch as a method but also the does it does it have to be a catch in order to get the error object and because isn't there a uh doesn't the then the then function have a uh there's an optional parameter for a uh an optional second parameter for a, a function that handles if the promise uh, fails? You might be talking about a rejection versus a resolve. And with that one, with the rejection, I believe if you're looking in Node, you're talking about a different set of stuff. So I'm gonna say possibly, but we'd have to talk a little bit more one-on-one -on -one about what you exactly saw there. When it comes to just general error exception handling, and I, um, so you're going to typically use the dot catch method. Sorry, my mind's going exactly what would be there. We'll talk one-on-one -on -one if you want to see more about it. But for general error exception handling, you're going to want to use the dot catch after your dot thens. So this is the way to protect against that. Any other questions about this? Okay, cool. Again, I just want to do a quick introduction to it. If you ever want to just protect against it, the dot catch is where it's at. So now that we have been quickly introduced to that, let's go ahead and get back to lecture. Let's get back to the fun stuff, the old days. Everybody just realize you're on lecture 17. We have been together for quite some time and you will have learned a ton of stuff. So let's just go back to our glory days. Remember this old thing? Remember when everyone was like, ah, what is this thing? The first time we ever saw this on our screen, right? What is this called? Who remembers this? A variable. Absolutely, really, a variable. And what is its data type? String. string. Very good, a string. You guys are all awesome, all all stars today. Very good, let's keep going. Let's make it a little bit harder. What's this one? Number. Very good, a a number, fantastic. How about this one? Boolean. Boolean. Boolean, very good. All right, let's make it a little bit more tricky here. How about this? Uh, object. Object. It's an object. object. Very good. It's an object. It's an object. Very good. And how about this one? All right. All right. All right. Look at that. A's for everybody. Awesome. Lecture's done. Right? Wouldn't that be way easier? <laughs> All right. So let's keep going here. What if we, we have to remember what our variable types are? So we know that our dog name here is a string. Remember with JavaScript, we just have to remember in our brain as we're going through a code, what are our data types? That's fine. We can organize our thoughts now. Again, we're 17 lectures in. We can get this. So say I bring in this function here. It's called multiply by two. And numbers only is my parameter. And what we do are we're going to multiply by two, return that. But myself as a developer, because I'm just like, I didn't have my coffee. Starbucks was closed, whatever, which has happened before. And I put this in here. What happens exactly? Well, we have a bad day. We cannot do this because can we multiply start by two? Well, we're going to get, we technically can. JavaScript won't exactly explode on you whatsoever, but it won't necessarily, but it won't necessarily be a good day. We don't want to exactly do that. So with JavaScript, 
we have to police ourselves. We have to be our own standards. We got to make sure what we code is up to code. Literally, we got to make sure the data types that are flowing through our systems are correct. Now, this is awesome because we have the flexibility to do whatever we want. We can make strings multiplied by two. JavaScript lets us do that. One of my coworkers once defined JavaScript to me as being the honey badger. Honey badger does whatever it wants. It's gonna try to help you. It's gonna let you do whatever you want and it's gonna fuss the least little bit it can. Now with this flexibility and all this responsibility comes great power. And again, it comes with you having to keep your stuff straight. So where am I getting at this? When it comes to development, developers on some sides do not really like this flexibility. They don't like to remember exactly what data types are coming through, especially in bigger systems where you have to really trace back the variable all the way through your functions to find out what, just what data type it is. That can be time consuming. Also, if you have new developers come in, they don't exactly know how your systems work. And if it's just JavaScript, it's whatever it wants to be. And therefore, with again that amazing power we have, that flexibility comes danger. We could do what we just saw, passing the wrong parameter type into our function. So in order to do this, or in order to prevent all of this flexibility, we sometimes want to actually define what our variable should be all the way through. So we're gonna be seeing that today, how to exactly still stay slightly flexible, but also putting some constraints on our code itself. So one of those things is, is that we're gonna bring in dog name again here, but this time I'm gonna be defining it a little bit differently. I say let dog name, my variable name, equal Stark. But I inserted this colon string here. In this case, we are dictating the actual data type of the variable itself. Again, some developers on their opinion, or in their opinion, do prefer this kind of structure. They actually know what their variables will be all the time. Remember in JavaScript, you can redefine your variable from seven to Stark with no fuss. You just have redefined your variable from a number to a string. Again, that can be dangerous. This is one way we can say, no, our variable will always be a string. And the way we do that is with this thing. Now, again, we just saw it very briefly. So let's go ahead, if we bring back in our function here and we pass this back in, what happens now when we start introducing inducing these structures, we will get an error in our environment, in our IDE, in Visual Studio Code, instead of actually during the compiling or when we're actually running the application. Our code won't blow up on us. Our IDE will yell at us, which again, some people do prefer that. So instead of having to consistently police ourselves, keeping ourselves in check, our IDE, our environments, Visual Studio Code can do it for us. Now, if the, out here, this structure sounds really, really nice, and if it doesn't, unfortunately, we have to go into it anyway. How we allow this structure to exist is that we bring in a new technology that helps JavaScript understand how to do this. Because again, JavaScript is an uncaged honey badger on just a rampage. How can we cage a honey badger? Well, we use the technology called TypeScript. TypeScript provides structure to JavaScript. I mean, it actually keeps that honey badger within its lanes. So we can't just go off the wheels and try to multiply a string by a number. Now, what exactly is TypeScript? Is TypeScript a whole new language? No, not technically. What it is, is that it's built on top of JavaScript. Think of it as a sugar coating on top of a delicious JavaScript already. JavaScript is your base layer, but TypeScript sits on top to help you provide structure to your applications. So that right there, in a nutshell, is TypeScript. So let's go ahead, we're gonna take a couple examples, or take a couple looks at an example here in just a moment. And real quick before I do that, any questions about TypeScript? Anything at all? Um, so what exactly, when they're uh, compiling to JavaScript, is it just, it like, 
takes out the like variable deck. It just checks for any kind of type errors with the typing you declared, checks for like compile errors, and then it takes out those uh, type declarations. Uh, and I'm sorry, I was trying to catch on. There's like, I don't know if it's me, and I apologize. I'm getting a lot of visual in and out. Is anybody else getting that today? Or not visual, but uh, audio in and out. Okay, it might be my headphones. If it keeps happening, I'm going to take them out. But Raiden, can you say your question one more time? I apologize. Yeah, so when the, what exactly is the TypeScript doing when it compiles? How is it, how does the code get modified when it compiles to JavaScript? Is it basically checking for compile errors and then removing all the extra type declarations? Yeah, so what it's called is that it's transpiled into JavaScript. So it takes the TypeScript. Again, your IDE will check for those issues with the, with the data structures beforehand or the data types beforehand. And then it transpiles it into JavaScript. So it just really converts the extra little sugar coatings that TypeScript has into what JavaScript would understand. So it strips away, again, those little extra bits into JavaScript, and then that is what's truly compiled to run your application. We'll be seeing that here shortly. But then, so, it's almost, so it's almost like a, a, kind of, a kind of test. It's kind of like doing tests on it, basically. It's just a testing for the types. Um, it is, I guess you can call it a test. It, it's really just a check or a validation. So yeah, a test, I guess, would be another word for that, for sure. But my question then is, if TypeScript, the whole point of TypeScript, right, is because it, it allows for types, type variables, declarations, and stuff. So if, if it's supposed to cut down on errors, correct? It's that, that's the idea. So if it removes all that, then aren't we back to the same error-prone thing that we had before? Like, I mean... Um. I mean, you'd have to define error prone because everything is error prone. It can be well, you know what I mean. But, but isn't the isn't the idea of this supposed to be to cut down on like, you know, errors because things aren't type declared? So like most languages, static languages have type, you know, mm -hmm. int, float, uh, you know, whatever. Okay. The, we, JavaScript doesn't have that, right? And so isn't the idea here that it lessens errors because you start having those? But then doesn't it, if it just removes them, aren't you back to the same state you were when you started with JavaScript? Like what? what? Errors are only introduced by humans. Humans are the ones with the mistakes. Computers are typically the ones that are closer to perfection than us. So when something is transpiled from TypeScript to JavaScript, humans do not have any intervention with the JavaScript compilation. That should never be touched by human hands, only the TypeScript. So, yes, once you transpile into JavaScript, if a human intervenes with the JavaScript, absolutely, it's more error prone again because it has been unfortunately touched by us. So, what you do is you only program in TypeScript, and that's what you run. You'll compile your TypeScript, it gets transpiled into JavaScript, and that's what's ran. And so, so, what it is is that, as, and this is what I do every day, is I, I actually develop in TypeScript. So, I will only develop in TypeScript. I never see the JavaScript side at all. It is all behind the scenes. It's not touched by human hands. So the only time I can actually introduce an issue is in TypeScript itself, which again tries to reduce some of that because of how it's structured. So basically it's a better form of JavaScript that can, then gets transformed into a back to the older, less pleasing form of JavaScript. Is that what we're... It depends on... It depends on your stance on it. Again, it is all about a developer's take. It's just another tool in the toolbox. So it depends if that developer likes more the dynamic ability of JavaScript or they want that structure that's been seen in more traditional languages. So it's all up to the developer themselves if they see it that way. I have a real quick yeah, question for, for TypeScript. Um, you had said something, if we don't have it on our machines, do it now. Uh, is that something that comes built in with VS Code? Nope. It will have to take, if you have to take a, or sorry, you'll have to take a look at the textbook on TypeScript, the first section. It'll tell you to make sure that Node is installed as well as TypeScript before this. So yeah, okay. if you don't have it on your machine, that's completely fine. Feel free to come back and look at the lectures, but you uh, will need it for Studio tonight. Is TypeScript NPM? Is it just, can I just install it through NPM? 
Yep, if you guys want to, if anybody needs to install it out there, take a look at your first section in this chapter of TypeScript. It will give you okay. those instructions. So if I have Node, TypeScript's on there too? Nope, TypeScript is going to be a different package. So take a look at, oh. take a look at okay. that first section. Take oh, a look at that first node, section. Use the Node package manager. You should be able to just install it. All right, we're not going to talk about downloading TypeScript. If you need it, go to the first one, but we will go through a quick example real quick to make sure if you want to validate that it is on your machine, what we're going to do is not have that right there. I'm going to move that to another desktop. Perfect, there we go. What we do is do a node. So what I did is open up a new terminal. I'm sorry there. Open up a new terminal, node dash dash version. Take a look at your version. I have 14.0 or 0 .2 .0 on my machine. If you have a nice or if you have a newer, shinier, nicer version of Node, that's completely fine. I have to keep mine, unfortunately, in 14 due to external projects. The next one you can do is npm dash s version to make sure that's on there as well. I have 16 or 6.14.4. Again, I got to keep mine usually in the lower ends of the spectrums. I'm also terrible when it comes to updates. Absolutely terrible. My team knows that too. I am an old soul. I will only update if I see a reason. Anywho, all right, last thing you need to do is TSC. This is going to be our TypeScript compiler for today, dash dash version. I have version 3.7 or 3.9.7. All right, these are the three things we're going to be using today. So if they're not on your machine, again, don't worry about it. You will need them for Studio Night, so just make sure you read that first section there. Mm, excuse me, you're just going to need these tools in order to tackle that stuff. All right, now that we have our tools in order, let's go ahead and bring it back to TypeScript. Let's go ahead and see some things actually out here in the wild. What I'm going to do is not have that up. I'm going to go here, open up a new window. Oh, a new window. That was from our last class. I'm going to bring that back down here. There we go. Awesome. What I'm going to do is just press open here. And I already created a nice little section for us. I'm going to go to our desktop or LC and I got a lecture 17 TypeScript stuff here. There's not going to be any files in here. That's all right with me. And here we go. This is what we're going to actually start creating in. Let's go and do that. So today we're just going to go ahead or right now we're just going to go ahead and just do some practice. So I'm going to call it practice dot. And this is going to be the first new part of TypeScript. Now remember back in our HTML or even when we started JavaScript, it always had the extension JS. JS stood for JavaScript. For this class, we're going to be learning TypeScript. So our extension for our TypeScript files is TS. Press enter and we have created our first TypeScript file right here. So let's go ahead and get some stuff in here. And here it's kind of like almost like repl again. We can go ahead and start programming some stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and create a variable. I'm going to say let my number, let's call it my fave number equal seven there. But remember with TypeScript variables for this one, help me out. What do I need to add here to complete this? Variable number after the identifier or no, num, I guess num. we go variable name. Absolutely, I heard all the pieces variable name, colon, colon, and then the data type, which this one is going to be a number because it's seven. Absolutely right. All right, it's going to say my my fave dog that does not exist yet equals start. Now, if I go ahead and put colon number here, look at what happens. Is Stark a number? So that's being a 10 out of 10 dog that doesn't exist. No, Stark is not a number. It is what kind of data type? String. String. String, very good. So let's go ahead and see what the error says here. It says type string is not assignable to type number. That's absolutely right. String is not assignable to a number here. This is the first indication that TypeScript is working correctly. It's yelling at me, telling me that my data types are not consistent with this variable. So it's Would absolutely it not right. Would it not give you an? Would it not throw an exception the other way around because you can cast numbers to strings? You can cast numbers to strings, but they're only strings or numbers after they've been casted. So if I was to write number around here, technically this works. Now is start going to be a number? No, it's going to be converted to a nan, a not a number, but. Remember, it's only that data type after the casting has been completed. No, but if you do like my name number, my fave number string equals seven, would it? It would have to say something else because it because if the other uh, if the other one threw an exception because you can't 
assign it to uh, the string to a number yet if you do. Yeah, we can take a look at that arrow. Now does it say? So type number is not assignable to type string. So when you see any of this kind of stuff, this is typically meaning one of the two, either what you're trying to assign it to or the type of the variable has been incorrect. Something is not consistent. So yeah. So, so set is, uh, numbers can be cast into meaningful strings, but they can't be assigned into strings in, type, in TypeScript. Uh, I believe so. Essentially, strings cannot be assigned to data variables that have been declared as numbers or any other data type, only to whatever's been declared as a string. Is that going to help, Reid? Well, I'm saying the, it's, you can't, it's, it still gives the same numeral, even though, like, like you said, like, uh, if you type cast, if you, if you cast a, you know, an alphanumeric string, to a number type, then it gives not a number because it contains non-numeral uh, characters. But the seven, but a uh, number can be cast to a string and it turns into a string that is still like useful. It doesn't turn it into like a not a string or whatever. Okay. But that's yep. so. There's the distinction though that it can be cast the number like the number with a numeric literal can be cast to a string, but it can't be directly assigned to a string. Okay, was there, did you have a question? Or are you just confirming that? Yeah, just confirming that. It was, yeah, it, absolutely. It's just, yeah, yeah, as we've seen that strings that are numbers can be turned into numbers, but numbers, or sorry, but strings that are, have, like you said, alphanumeric or A's and B's and numbers, trying to be turned into a string or turned into a number will not work. It's a NAN, not a number. So yeah. All right, we're going to continue on here. So my favorite number is not a string. It is a number. So here we go. We are going to go and fix this. So again, in order to tell our variable what kind of type it's going to be, we say that colon and then that data type. All right. Now we're going to just make a very, very simple application here. And the final thing is we're going to see something to the screen. Who remembers the JavaScript? How we actually print something to the screen, what do we always use? Console.log. The console.log, absolutely right. So I'm gonna go ahead and write a string literal here with those ticks. My fave number is dollar sign that. My, I can't type today. My fave number and my dog is dollar sign and then my fave dog. There we go, we're gonna console on that. Let's go ahead and save that and now, is there one, a giant run button up here? Unfortunately, no. That was the one benefit maybe I gave Replit that they have a giant run button, but unfortunately they don't in Visual Studio Code. So let's actually figure out how to run this code once it's created. So what we're gonna need to do that is that we're gonna hop over to our terminal. If you use that terminal within your Visual Studio Code, that's absolutely fine too. I just have a new one open here just for ease of use. So I'm gonna go and clear this out by just saying clear. And what I'm gonna do is make sure that I am in the directory where my TypeScript is, lecture 17 TypeScript. This is the directory I have all my stuff in. I'm gonna type in ls just to make sure I see practice.ts there, awesome. So the next thing I'm going to do is I need to, again, TypeScript is a sugar-coated version of JavaScript. We cannot ask our app machines to just run TypeScript. It doesn't know TypeScript. It can't compile TypeScript, but, we can transpile TypeScript into JavaScript. So that's what we're gonna do. To do that, we use the command TSC. Trans, oh, excuse me, not TypeScript, uh, TypeScript compiler. So TSC, and then we place in the file that we want to compile. In this case, it's practice, wow, that rhymed right there, didn't it? Practice.ts. Press enter, and it's going to go ahead and compile that. Now, let's go and see this, ls. We take a look at this, and now we have two files. Let's go back over here and actually take a look at them. So we see TS, this is the file we originally created. Let's go and see the JS here. Now, take a very close look here. This was, again, TypeScript at one point, but we compiled it or transpiled it into JavaScript itself. So we can actually run it here shortly. But look at how it actually compiled it. Now, one thing I wanna call out again, do not touch this file once it has been compiled. This is not for us to work with. We are working with TypeScript. This is just the middleman between something that's more structured, TypeScript, and our compiler, what's actually gonna run the application. So don't touch this stuff 
We're just here to take a look and walk away. So it looks like it did compile it to my favorite number equals seven and my fave dog equals Stark and then our console log. Awesome. It looks like everything looks legitimate. So let's go ahead and actually run this JS code here. What we're going to do is go back to the terminal over here. Now we actually want to run it. The person who runs our stuff on our machine is that new technology also that we learned about, Node. So Node is what's going to compile our JS JavaScript for us. So we say Node, and then we say practice.ts. Hey, Kyle. Oh, Kyle? Not TS. Yeah, Lauren, what's up? So could you make the, uh, the uh, <clears throat> fonts a little bigger so I can see them? They're kind of blurry. Thank you. Let's see if I can do that. Oh, my settings here. I'm going to have to take a look. Uh, I think Kyle, uh, maybe Command Plus. Would that work? Is it Command Plus? Let's see. I have to try it. Oh, thank you so much. You just saved me like 20 minutes there. <laughs> awesome, awesome. I actually never knew that. So I'm assuming, because I don't want to be trapped like this forever, is it a command a minus, I'm assuming, for going the other way? Yes. All right. <laughs> I'm actually relatively new to Max, about three years. So thank you very much. I did need that. All right. So there you go. Does that look a little bit better, Lauren? It's control plus or control minus on PC. Yes. Oh, cool, cool. OK. Awesome. All right. And I also made a small mistake there. I didn't mean to say practice.ts. I meant the JS. Node can only run JavaScript files. So we're going to say node practice.js. Press enter and take a look at what happens. I can even zoom in even more. Look at that. Ah, I'm going to abuse this power now. My fave number seven and my dog is Stark. So we console log this correctly. Now, we're going to take my mistake and turn it into a learning, uh, a learning moment here. Up here for syntax errors. This is when I tried to run my TS file. Unexpected token colon. The specific colon it's talking about is over in RTS here. This right here. It has no idea what that is. So just a heads up, do not try to run your TS files. Compile them first with TSC and then run them with Node. All right. Any questions about this so far? So it, even though you declared them with light in the TypeScript, it, uh, uh, the compiled JavaScript use, declares them with uh, var. Is that is that something that uh, is changed in later TypeScript? Because I know like like var is supposed to be like you know getting it, it's you know generally not standard practice to use it at any more right. So why is yeah. the TypeScript compiled to use it? That one actually, I don't know a good answer for. Unfortunately, I would hope that they update in the future. There might be a very good reason for using var. The only, the big, like the best reason I can think of is that because it doesn't, the transpiler doesn't want to make a judgment whether or not that it should be a constant because it doesn't know exactly if it's going to be a constant way through. I don't know, something like that. So they use the general version of var or the transpiler is just still using the just typical ES5 stuff. I've seen var here and there. It's not gone though letting Conster out. So maybe in the future, I'll be there. But why exactly? I don't have a good answer for that. It's just out of date. I'd say write a, write a very strongly worded letter to TypeScript saying, we only want lets and cons. We'll probably get those developers kicked into shape. <sighs> All right, let's go and see what my ears here. Oh, yeah, because you think practice is there. Stop. All right. Awesome. All right. Any final questions about this before we keep moving? How's everyone feeling about TypeScript? I mean, we just put our toes in, but I want to see anything out there. Anybody got anything? All right. Let's step it up then. We're going to go ahead and create now a few other things. We're going to go ahead and just create let is good dog. And this is going to be a true or false. Who can tell me what my data type declaration for this one is going to be? Boolean. 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 Very good, a Boolean. So we say Boolean here equals true. Start's always a good boy. The next one we can do is, we'll go ahead and we have a number, we have a string, we have a Boolean. Let's go ahead and do one more here saying, let my dog names equal Stark, Bella, and then Toby. Awesome. But this one is, what kind of data type again? Ray. 
It's an array, array of strings. It's an array of strings. Absolutely right. And we need to know both things. Very good, Raiden. So yes, the data type is array. It's a container, but it contains string. TypeScript needs to know both of those things. So what we put here is we say there are strings. I can type string. String, but we denote that as an array with those open and close brackets at the very end. So this is how we write an array here. It's very specific. So if you are trying to create an array, make sure that you tell it the data type with those open and close square brackets. Remember, remember, remember. That is very important. All right, last but not least, what we're gonna do is we're gonna see a let my dog equal, open and close parentheses there, we're gonna say name the string, oops, sorry, name is start here, and age is seven. There we go. This one right here is a very general way of saying object. So this is an object that contains those properties within it. So these right here are all the data types we're going to be working with before we start diving a little bit deeper in TypeScript. So we've seen these data types. That's why I'm going a little bit faster here. We're just adding that small little extension onto our variable to tell TypeScript what exact type it's going to be. So any questions about this? So Kyle, right. if it's an if yeah. it's an object, you don't have to redeclare what type it's going to be in the object itself. Not necessarily. No, you will not have to in this kind of object. You will not have to declare what kind of type it's going to be. Okay. All right. So last thing I'm going to show everyone is a function real quick before we continue on. A function, my function, open and close parentheses. This. this is a typical function. Nothing has changed here. Two things we can talk about is one, the parameters. I'm going to say message here. Just an arbitrary name for our parameter. But parameters are also data, kind of like variables. With this, we also need to share what kind of declaration it's going to be. So with message, we say colon and what it's going to be. In message, I want it to be a string. And then my fave number, if I want to add another parameter, it would be a number. In parameters, this is how we are going to actually show what data type it's going to be. And here in our function, we always do what we want to do. We do our console log. So I'm going to say that console log message, and then my favorite number. This is just for a quick example. My favorite number. Oh, I got it mixed up. Smash it out. All right. So down here, this is how we create a function. And then, of course, when we create the function, what's the second step we need to do? And actually, for to run. What do we need to do? Call the function. Call the function, absolutely right. We have to create the function and then we have to call the function. Fantastic, so we say my function and then we just, message is just the dog's name, so I'm gonna say start here and then my favorite number is seven. And also just passing that variable from the top. Now everything works here awesomely. Let's go ahead and go over here and what I'm gonna do now is run our two Run our, uh, run our two things once again. I'm going to say tscpractice.ts. Now take a close look at this. When we go back to practice.js, because that's remember it gets turned into this JS stuff, it gets updated. So when you run that tsc, what it's going to do is update the file without even telling you. It's just going to do it. So remember that. So it looks like everything has been written well. So that's all good. Let's go and run that. Pop quiz, how do I run this JS file that we just created? Node Very good. Node practice.js. Fantastic. We're going to run that. And I still see my favorite number is seven and my dog is star. Awesome. So this is the happy way, the happy path. But let's go ahead and see what happens if I try to even switch these parameters. Say seven and say start. Oh, what did I just do? I just did the one thing, Kyle, that you were not supposed to do, and you said, do not do it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Absolutely right. Let's go over here and do this instead. We're going to go and put seven here and start instead. Now, it's very, very small, but down here we have a little red line. It says argument of type number is not assignable to parameter of type string. And I know we had this um, before, so let me go ahead and update this one as well. Can do awesome. the command plus and minus on that one too. Oh, what? Mind blown. You guys are teaching me more than I'm teaching you today. 
Heck yeah. All right. I'm going to be doing that. All right. So yes, because we are not passing the correct parameter, if I put in start here now to correct this one, what happens is that the, our error goes over to the next side. Awesome. Awesome. One more thing I want to show you is that we have two parameters up here. Unlike JavaScript in TypeScript, I ask, I demand on line 13, two parameters, but TypeScript, or, but in JavaScript, I can define either zero or two or exponential. It's fine. But in TypeScript, it must have all of those parameters that we defined. So that error is what we're going to get. Argument uh, for my favorite was not defined. So what I need to do is define it. So remember, if our TypeScript function asks for more than one parameter, or even any parameters, we need to make sure everything is defined. That is not optional. Awesome. All right. Those are what I want to show you real quick. Any final questions before we continue on? You said if you switch them, say that again. If you switch the parameters, the error, it'll have an error. It will. Yep. Because we are not providing a string for a number or a number for a string. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Awesome. Any other questions? Let's go twice. Let's keep going then. All right. So all back to you all again. Help me out. How do we start building a class? So remember building classes. Class, uh, the keyword class. Very good. In this case, we're going to be building a dog. So I'll start us out. Remember, we're going to start with that capital D for dog just because it is a class name. Class names are always capitalized. What does every class have? Constructor. Very good. A constructor. We need to provide a constructor in there. In this case, in a constructor, typically we're passing the properties that we want to set the class instance or that instance of the class to. In this case, of course, for our dog, we always have that name and age. Now, I'm passing this into the parameters. How do I set the actual instance value, the property of that value, to that dog? What, do I, what keyword do I use? This, this dot name. This, this dot name equals, and then whatever my parameter variable is, name here. And then same with age. So remember, we use that powerful keyword, this. Very good. And just for fun, I'm going to put one more thing in there. We're going to put a function in there. Remember, when we're putting functions inside of classes, what keyword do we not use, obviously? Function. Function. Very good. When we're creating a function in a class, we do not use the keyword function when we write it like this. Very good. Let's go ahead and create that real quick. So new file. I'm going to call it dog.ts. And of course, I'm going to create class dog, open and close parentheses or curly brackets. And then I create the constructor there. So it's a name and age. This dot name equals name. This dot age equals age. All right. First things first, we are going to be converting what we just saw in JavaScript into TypeScript. So who can give me one thing that we can place in here to convert it to TypeScript? Equal sign. Data type. The, the data type. The We're going to place the data the type properties. in here. And name stop and Very good. We're going to start up here in the constructor. Remember, these parameters here that are coming in the constructor need to have a data type associated with them. So the name needs to be a string, and the age needs to be a number. There we go. And then what we can do is what we need to do in TypeScript now is that instead of just saying this, that name, and letting JavaScript take care of it, we actually need to define our properties within the class. So what we can do is we come up here and we say let name. We can just say colon if we wanted to. Oh, what am I doing wrong? Oh, I got this wrong last time too. Uh, what am I forgetting here? Same thing I put on uh, name colon string and age colon number. Uh, I mean, before constructor, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, what am I forgetting? I think. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I was like, I don't put the, I don't put the, I always forget the vanilla classes there. There we go. Okay, so perfect, perfect. We do not put the letter const in there. I, I, I apologize. I completely forgot about that one. Do not put the letter const in front of the declaration for the property inside the class. We say name up there, and then we say age. There we go. We'll say number there. 
Perfect. Now we're actually declaring those properties up there in that class. Awesome. All right, last things last, we need to go ahead and create that speak in there. What we do is we're just say console.log and we're gonna say for a dog goes bark. <laughs> awesome, perfect. There we go, we have created our dog class now in TypeScript. So any questions about this one? All right, cool. Now, just for fun, let's go ahead and we want to go ahead and bring in the dog property over here into our application. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, in order to use dog over here, and do I have a question? Sorry. Now, in order to bring our dog class over here, what is one thing or the first thing we need to do in order to use this dog class elsewhere? What's it called? Export. We need to export, export it. Export, yeah. Absolutely. If we want to share our modules, our classes, our code against other modules or even anybody out there in the world, we need to export it. Allow other people outside of my file to use it. In order to export in TypeScript, what we're going to be doing is using the export keyword, if you've already seen that, but in front of the declaration of the class itself. So we say export class dog. What this is going to do is export this class outward that we can use in other files. Before you've seen, uh, I believe, exports and then module and then include that. But with TypeScript, we're going to be doing a little bit different here with export class dog. Now that we've exported it, we can use it in those other files. So if we come over here. What do we need to do to use it in this file? What's that called? Import. import. Very good. Import it. If you're, somebody's exporting something, we got to import it if we want it. So let's go ahead and import it. In TypeScript, we get to learn a kind of a newer way of getting in modules. Beforehand, you all remember the require way. So require is still used. It's a little bit more in ES5 than it is today, but it's still used. So it's absolutely fine to be continuing to utilize it. But today we're going to learn the different way to take in a module. And that is with the import. So what we say is import here. And then we actually want to get which class or what thing we want out of the file. In this case, I want my dog here, that dog class. And then I say from exactly what file do I want my dog class from? Where is it at? And I say quote dot slash, because remember that's base directory. And I say dog, just like that. That's how we're going to import that dog that's being exported from that dog file. Now, you might see in Visual Studio Code this being a little bit grayed out, just like slightly, slightly lighter. It's because it's saying it's unused. So let's go ahead and use it. What I'm going to do is create a new instance of my dog class. Who can tell me how to create a new instance of a class? What do I start with? Let. Okay, go ahead. Let's call my dog. Very good. I'll even help us out here. Equals. Plus. New. Very good. Absolutely. That very powerful keyword, new. And then what comes after new? The class. Dog. Class name. Dog. Very good. Yes, the class name and then the constructor. Stark and then seven. Just like that. Now let's see what this is. Redeclare box gate. Oh. Oh, I was like, what are you doing? I'm going to go ahead and comment out our object up here. So we no longer need that because instead of just creating an object of here, we're actually creating an instance of a class. So we can say is my dog dot, and now we can call to its properties, name, age, and my favorite one, speak. Let's make start speak. Awesome. Save that and come back over here. I'll ask for questions here in just a moment, but I wanted to catch up because I am a little bit behind. So TSC practice dot TS. We're going to recompile there. No errors, no errors, no errors. Oh, awesome. Come back over here. Let's take a look at our JS file just real briefly. Look at that. We have this all compiled, but also dog.js or TS was compiled too. And all that nasty stuff. We won't even talk about that stuff. We're going to stay right out of that file. So now what we're going to do is say node in order to run it. We're going to say practice.js. Run that. We see my fave number seven and my dog's name is Stark and then Bark. Awesome. So I'm going to hop back over to that code real quick. Any questions on what we just saw here with converting this class into TypeScript, exporting it, and then importing it? Any 
anything at all. Kyle, when you yeah, when you import um, into the other file, remember you enclose the class name in our curly brackets. Mm -hmm. So is that for anything we import? Like for even if we want to import a function, if still we put them in curly brackets? That's a very good question. So when I wrap it in curly brackets, it's because there is a potential of multiple exports from this file. I can export many things if I wanted to from dog because I'm not declaring any default. So if I have another, say, maybe I put in here cat instead. And in here I say meow. And so here, now I'm creating a cat. So over my practice, what I could do is do multiple exports. I can also export cat here. So that is what we're doing. It's a multiple, it's a way of doing multiple exports. Now, if you're asking yourself, okay, but I've seen it without the curly brackets, you're absolutely correct. When you see it without the curly brackets, there is a default export, meaning there's one thing that somebody wants in that file typically, or what they're exporting for the typical export. How you can do that, again, you don't need to know this right now, but what you can do is say export default and then dog. Come back over here and we see that there's an error on dog. What this is, is that we need to actually export dog. What we want to do. Yeah, there we go. So if you see without the curly brackets, that's technically called a default export, or that's how you're going to be finding that inside that file. So great question there, Hannah. I know I probably got a little bit deeper than you wanted, but does that help out a little bit with your question? Yes, thank you very much. Uh, I have Any a other question. My question is, when you actually transpile the code, right? When you turn it, when you turned that TypeScript back into JavaScript, when it did that, if you open that code, does it look any different from like the code we wrote, I don't know, some weeks ago for classes or what? Like, did they actually, does it look any different than what we would have done manually or like, or is it going to be the exact same code? It's going like, to look a little bit more intense. It's going to look a little bit more intense, but it is typically the same, same stuff. So yeah. But it is going to have some differences though. Okay. Interesting. It will. The transpiler will do a, a, a little bit different job to it. So I'd say don't look at the JS and expect it to look like that. Just trust the JS process. Stick with your TS. Yeah, but the nerd in me is fascinated by what they would have changed in the code. Absolutely. And feel free to go and explore exactly what the transpiler is doing. I will not stop you. But we can't go in it today because it will just it will be a whole nother road we go down. But yeah, feel free to do it yourself if you'd like. Absolutely. All right, any other questions about this stuff before we continue on? Can we use export module for a module exporting we have used, right? Export module, something. That's more of a JavaScript, vanilla JavaScript kind of fashion. So I would say no, in TypeScript, you're gonna to wanna to stick with the exports, how we're seeing them in front of the classes, or you're gonna be exporting some kind of function. Um, you won't be doing the modules. Okay. I have a quick question. Just um, because I was trying to get this figured out on my computer, um, would I be able to see the practice.js? It's gonna look a little different. I'm just trying to grab a little little snapshot so I can go back over the thing. And then the, uh, the dog.typescript and then the dog.js. Mm -hmm. So I can't hold on to this too much, but if you need to, Henry, I'm going to be pushing this up to my repository so you can definitely get the code down if you want to okay. see it. Um, if, yeah, if you can just click on the file because I can just use the snipping tool. And... Okay. Well, I got to hop back over to class. So, okay. Kyle, well, send, yeah, me, a, we'll get the send me a link yeah. of your GitHub uh, repository in Slack privately so I'll have it, please. Feel free. Uh, yeah, direct message me saying that you're requesting that and I'll get it to you at the end of class. Okay, cool. Awesome, awesome. All right, guys. So we're going to continue on here. So what we saw here in dog.ts is that we are able now to export our dog, but I'm happy we actually got that question because we were able to create cat here. So what I'm gonna do is go in and create a new file here, new file, I'm gonna call it cat.ts. We're gonna be creating a lot of pets today. What I'm gonna do is take over that dog.ts and I'm gonna take in the cat. I'm also gonna take out this default. We don't wanna do default there just for right now. I mean, we can just say, nah. 
There we go, we are exporting our cats. Awesome, awesome. All right, so we have a cat class and a dog class. I'm gonna go over here to practice and I'm gonna just change our stuff up here just real quick so we can actually have it. So I'm gonna import dog from dog. I saw the question there, do you have to put the TS extension? Thank you for the TA for answering that. You can put it in there, but you do not have to. The least amount of finger strokes you have to take on your keyboard, the better. So you do not have to do it if you don't want to. All right, so we're importing our dog and our cat. Awesome, awesome. So let my cat equal new cat. And anybody got a good cat name out there? Penguin. That's not, I mean, I can't I judge. Dexter. I oh, 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 I can spell Baxter. I also can't spell Penguin. <laughs> boots. Boots. Okay, there we go. Boots. I can spell Boots. I was thinking about, like, oh, B-A-X-T-R. That's what I was like, how am I spelling Baxter? All right, Boots is four years old. Awesome. All right, we got my cat, my dog. Awesome. All right, so we have our cat and our dog. Let's hop back over here and let's talk about it. We just created our cat and our dog classes. You know how to class, you know how to create classes in JavaScript and in TypeScript. You know how to export them now. Now, the thing about our cat and our dog, let's take a close look at it real quick. Our dog class here has a name, age, and a speak method here that says bark, while cat has a name, age, and a speak method that says meow. Now, what does this tell you? What, if you're looking at these two classes, what is very, very apparent? They're very, very similar. They're different, but they're similar. So, and also if you're looking very close and you're thinking again as that lazy developer, you're seeing a lot of repetitive code. We don't like repetitive code. So, when we're talking about our cat and our dog, let's talk about ways where we can bridge very similar classes that we kind of just saw. Now think about a cat and a dog. What do they have in common? What word more generally defines them do they have in common? That word is pet. They're both technically pets. A cat and a dog, respectively, can be sheltered as pets. They're awesome. So pet is our more general term for these two individual things that are a little different. So we have a general word for it. We know kind of the shape of a pet or what exactly a dog and a cat have in common. We just need something now to really pair them together. In order to do that, what we can create is a thing called an interface. Something that truly can bridge these two classes together. And again, remove that duplicated code. So let's go ahead and see that. What I'm gonna do is create an interface. I'm gonna say new file, I'm gonna call it pet.ts. In order to create an interface, what I'm gonna do is say interface, and then what my interface is. In this case, it's gonna be pet. Open and close, square brackets. Now what this interface is, is think of it as a contract. What my objects are going to look like? What are my pets going to look like? So to answer that question, we take a look at what are pets, dog and cat. So let's take a look at their class structures. Again, we see that they all have names, age, and a speak method. Let's go to the cat one. They have a name, age, and speak method. So what I'm gonna do is utilize all of that knowledge. So I'm gonna take the name and the age and bring it over to pet. I'm gonna come over here to dog and I'm also gonna grab the speak function. Oh, I actually need, and so what I'm gonna need there. So what it's complaining about here is that I cannot actually define a function within an interface and we'll talk about that in a second. So what I'm gonna do is just put that there. Awesome. So again, an interface is not like an object. It's not gonna actually contain data. It is a contract. It is saying, I promise my objects, my classes are going to look like this. They're going to have a name. They're going to have an age. They're going to have a function that's called speak. Pinky promise. So that's what these interfaces are being defined for. Better yet, we're going to be able to use this interface if we do one thing to it, and that is exporting it. So one more thing before we get to see this new technology in action is called, ex or we need to export it. It's the export interface. So once I export the interface, I'm now allowed to call this and tell other classes what its structure needs to be at the very least to again abide by this contract I just wrote out for it. This thing's about to sign up for a cell phone bill right here. 
and cell phone bill is called pet. So let's go ahead and see how it does that. We're gonna come over to dog. What I'm gonna do is just remove everything just to see it at its, at its freshest, let's say. So what I need to do is first import pet. I say import and then I say pet from quotes dot slash and then pet. There we go. And now what I wanna do is I wanna tell my dog, you're about to sign up for the cell phone bill. You're going to abide by this contract called pet. Now I do that, it was with a keyword called extends. Extends and then the name of the interface. And this one again is pet. There we go. So this pet is underlined in red. Let's go and see what it says. Cannot extend interface pet. Did you mean implements? Ah, oh, I absolutely did. I apologize. I meant implements, interface implements. I'm thinking something else. Implements. Thank you very much. Oh, I apologize. If I can spell implements correct. There we go. Awesome. Implements. I apologize. Not exports. Don't ask what that's about. We'll talk about that later. Implements and then our interface. Think II. Implements interface. Sorry. Like I said, I'm having a day today. Implements pet. So we have nowhere red under our pet. Let's go over to dog and see what it says. It says class dog incorrectly implements interface pet. Type dog is missing the following properties. Name, age, and speak. Now when you see this, Again, this is the contract yelling at you. You are not up to code to what you promised you would be like. In order to do that, we now need to define what the shape of this pet is going to look like. So first we start out with a constructor and we say name and age, just like we had before. We say this dot name equals name and this dot age equals age. We see that these two are these two class variables or properties are in red because we need to define them. So we say name of string, we say age of number. So we see it's still highlighted in red because we're forgetting one more thing. We need to implement the speak function. So let's go and finish up by doing that. So we say speak, console.log, and then bark. Once we do that, we see that our red is now gone under dog because we have officially fulfilled the contract. Now, once this is done, can you add more functions or methods, or excuse me, functions or properties? Absolutely. If I wanted to add rollover, and say whatever, did it? I absolutely can. That's fine, I'm adding things onto my dog. I can go above and beyond the contract, but I cannot do anything less than what it says. So what do interfaces really do? They keep you within that structure. They are, pro or they are setting those bumper lanes for you so you do not go off the wheels when you're trying to create your classes. So what does this necessarily do? Though we don't see any true point to it maybe right away, it does again provide that necessary structure for you and other developers to fulfill as you're adding onto your applications. When you are building new parts of your application, you want to make sure that you at least have the general rules, the general guidelines to create something within, the, within expectation. And interfaces allow that. In general, TypeScript allows that. Final question two, is interfaces available in JavaScript? No, they're a TypeScript concept. And there's also other few, a couple other TypeScript concepts we haven't talked about that provide extra structure but interfaces is one of those very powerful ones that we wanted to talk about very quickly. So this right here is interfaces. Any questions about what we just saw here? Before we do that, also, I'm gonna come over to cats. What I'm gonna do is say implements here and say pet also. So you've got the interface. Does TypeScript allow for class inheritance? Because Absolutely, but we are not gonna be talking about that today. But yes, it will be able to, inheritance is allowed. Yes. Okay. Yes, you can have super classes and it all gets passed in. Oh, and I'm yeah. sorry, yeah, because we did talk about it a little bit. Yeah, inheritance will act just the same as we learned in JavaScript. We just have to continue on with those, those uh, with defining the data types. So yeah, Jody, it, it definitely still allows it. Uh, I have a question. Uh, can we pass the parameters in, in uh, interface functions? In interface functions, no. Interfaces will actually not have any of the logic for the functions itself. But yes, you can technically place in, let's go see what I'm actually talking about here, pet. 
If you wanted to, you can demand speak have a parameter. So you can say message, you can say string in here. So now all my dogs and cats must have that, um, have that parameter within it. So I must have a message. Okay. Yep, message string. Yeah. So yeah, very good. So you can actually, yeah, you can absolutely add. Um, you can absolutely add a parameter in there. Sorry, I can't type in, type and think it for some reason today. But yes, there we go. Good question. Any other questions on that stuff? else okay so uh to to kind of like make sure that the point has really been driven in that we will not be adding logic into pets or into interfaces it is just the contract so it is just seeing how it's going to look as as jody mentioned for inheritance we're able to take on previous classes structures and properties within it so logic is defined there what do i mean by logic code so actual methods are being written out or functions being written out properties are being set that's available still to in typescript as well interfaces is just the new thing that strike uh strike that the typescript introduces that we want to kind of explore is there a limit to importing yes um or no sorry there is no limit to importing. you can import as many files as you want i mean of course don't over import there's no true big limit, but yes, you can import as many as you want. So if I want to do more imports here, if I wanted to, for some reason, take in cat for whatever reason too, I can do that. So yeah, you can import as many files as you want there. Great question. Anything else? anything anything all right and that's it everyone that is all i got for today so we have learned about typescript remember it is keeping us in the bumper lanes it is not adding anything new it's giving us some new concepts but it's still at the end of the day being compiled back into javascript so our javascript architecture our structure our baseline there is still there so TypeScript is just adding a little bit of extra structure to our stuff that we're doing. That is it though. Remember, uh, our studio review will still be at eight o'clock tonight. So feel free to join in on that. Other than that, have, great in, uh, have a great week. Have a great weekend if I don't see you again. And I'll see Thanks, you all back Kyle. on Monday. Thanks everyone. Have a great on time in small groups.